Hey everyone and welcome back to Cruising with Matthew. So today I'm going to talk a little bit more about P&O Cruises Britannia. Now in my previous video I talked a bit about the ship in terms of her facilities and gave a brief tour around her, whereas today I'm going to give you a few of the hints and tips that I learnt whilst I was on board her, as well as some of my own personal opinions. Now obviously these are my own opinions and the best way to experience Britannia is to go on her yourself, however I figured this may be useful for some of you and may help you learn a few bits of information about Britannia that you may not know, so I hope you can sit back and enjoy. Number one, she is a very, very big ship. So it may seem like I'm stating the obvious by saying that Britannia is a big ship, because you've probably looked at pictures and been like, well obviously, yeah, she's huge but she's almost double the size of other of the smaller ships in the p and Cruises fleet, like Aurora. So this means that you have to do a lot more walking to get from place to place, especially if you're situated in the front of the ship like we were, and you have to go to the back of the ship, where, for example, on B-Deck, the laundrette was, and uh, at the bottom of the ship, there is the club dining restaurant, the Oriental. Now, this didn't bother me, but I was aware of the fact that potentially, if you had limited mobility, this may be a bit of a struggle. So what I'd recommend people do is if you're in that situation, is to look at the deck plans and maybe situate your cabin towards the midships area so that you're basically the centre for everything. Or if you're aware that you're going to be more likely to be visiting places at the very front or back, you alter your cabin choice accordingly. Now that's not to say that Britannia's size is an issue, and I'm pretty sure most ships in the P&O Cruisers fleet, if not all of them, are wonderfully accessible but it's just something to be aware of but the, and the flip side of that is because she's so big it means that you can have a wide range of cabins and facilities available so there is always that but I just thought I'd mention it so people would be aware number two she doesn't have a central staircase now the lack of a midship staircase on Britannia is compensated by the fact that there are lots of lifts and it's inevitable though that during busy periods like when you're going into a port or if there's a big show on like astonishing or it's dinner, breakfast, a lot of people are trying to go to the upper or lower decks and sometimes the lifts can get quite busy and invariably we always have the case of sometimes the lifts may skip a floor and people can get a bit agitated but my advice would be to avoid this is just simply go to the forward or aft staircases and go under your own steam up or down wherever you need to be. Additionally, I always try to get the lifts if I'm going a significant number of decks up and just walk down because that isn't an issue for me. And it's also just so that you can free up the lifts for people who actually need them. But this may all change when Britannia goes into her refit in October 2019 if I recall because they may well put the uh, central staircase in and this may uh, improve matters and it's really not a massive issue it's just something that people should be aware of before you go on her because otherwise it may be a bit of a surprise when you're like oh where's the staircase but it didn't really affect me and I still absolutely loved her. Number three there isn't a promenade deck on board p and Britannia. Now besides the central staircase the other design feature which I find slightly odd is the lack of a promenade deck. Now I know there is probably a very complex maritime reason why they weren't able to put a promenade deck in, but having been on Oriana and going on other cruise ships like Aurora and Azura after Britannia, I realized that I did actually quite miss the promenade deck, purely because I love walking around the promenade deck and also like stepping out in an evening after dinner, watching the sunset is one of the many joys of cruising in my opinion. But it's not to say that Britannia doesn't have any lower outside deck space when on the top deck of the atrium you have outside of Java and the glass house a form of mini promenade deck although one side of that is often occupied by smokers but that didn't really bother me and I did appreciate Pino at least putting that in so you could get that promenade deck experience albeit slightly miniaturized and there is a form of a hidden deck outside the live lounge at the very back of the ship because there is a little wraparound deck which faces the very aft of the ship so you can get some fantastic wake views and the only thing that you do need to be aware of is that you need to look up because there is a large number of um, balconies and suites facing back meaning that you are probably overlooked and you do need to be aware of your noise especially in the evenings because people may be sleeping but they are some fantastic deck spaces so I would urge you to seek them out when you're on and 
that is a small issue with Britannia, but it, again, it really didn't affect me that much, and I did really enjoy her. Number four, make sure that you go to the theatre at least once. Now, the Headliners Theatre is really one of the highlights of Britannia, in my opinion, and I would urge anyone, even if you've never really been into theatre, you're not too bothered about musicals, uh, please visit the theatre at least once during your cruise, purely because the calibre of performances that you would see there are akin to that of West End and Broadway and is included in your cruise fare, so you might as well make the most of it whilst you can. And they have some fantastic shows and some really like out there ones, like Astonishing was absolutely mind blowing. And they even had a form of like a light hearted uh, performance where we had all the fairy tales that we grew up with, but taken to the sound of modern music. So I think we had in The Wizard of Oz, the Cowardly Lion singing Katy Perry's Roar, which was, a, albeit a slightly bizarre experience, but I absolutely loved it, and it was really light-hearted and fun. So please, even if you're not a huge theatre fan, go and give it a try once, because I bet you, you will be impressed. Number five, make sure you attend the Captain's Gala Night Party. Now, the Captain's Gala Night tends to occur on the first sea day after you leave Southampton or Barbados, if you're going to the Caribbean and it really is a fancy affair and you get to hear the captain give a brief overview of the cruise as well as cracking a few jokes along the way and you get a few complimentary drinks of either red wine, white wine, uh, gin, champagne I think in a couple of cases and it really is a lovely experience and you get to see everyone all dressed up in their long dresses and suits and I've really enjoyed that, and frankly I'd love it every single form of night, although I'm sure the captain would probably get a little bit bored of saying the same thing, but it's a lovely experience. And I know for some people dressing up may not be their thing, but I would urge you to put yourself out there, because it's a fantastic experience, and for me it was one of the highlights of the cruise. Number six, try things that you wouldn't normally try. Now one of my favourite things of cruising is the fact that you have a huge range of drinks and food options, and this is something that I would encourage anyone who goes on a cruise to try. And this is largely relates to the likes of food, purely because you have this huge range of often included food. Obviously, you have the likes of the Sindhu, Epicurean, Beach House, and the Glass House sliders and things that are extra cost. But even in the main dining room, you have a huge range of food choices, and they tend to rarely repeat, if ever. And I would urge you just to try foods that you might not like or things that you thought, oh, I'll try and I'm not sure. Like I tried lobster, I tried sea bass, sea bream. Um, I even tried a blue Stilton mousse at one point, which was certainly interesting. I'm not sure if I'd try it again. But it's just stuff that you wouldn't normally experience on land because I would never, ever consider cooking a lobster. And frankly, it'd be too much. And you just, you might as well try stuff a little bit different because you never know. And really, if you put on the pun, push the boat out because it's something that most people don't get to experience. And same with the likes of drinks as well. Like, I made it a personal mission to try and work through all the cocktails that I knew I might like. And there were some that were resounding failures because it turns out that a Long Island iced tea is actually quite strong. Whereas the other things, like I tried a salted caramel martini and that actually was one of my favourite drinks of the cruise. So it's just to kind of like see what you like. And yeah, there may be some things that you're not 100% with, but you're glad that you've tried it. And it, for me, adds to the experience that you're able to broaden your horizons in that regard. Number seven, there are more sunbeds than you think. Ask anyone who has been on a cruise ship and issues with sunbeds seem to pop up on every cruise ship that I've been on, at least with P&O. I don't know if it's the same with other cruise lines, but people tend to get very territorial over sunbeds and get up at the crack of dawn just to get their favourite sunbed. If that's what is really important to you on a cruise, that's fair enough, but personally I don't understand it. Now, I want to reassure people, on Britannia at least, when we went, there was never any issue for our family of three to get a sunbed. Sure, sometimes you have to walk around a little bit, but there are enough sunbeds. You just have to look for them. And this was important to note that it was full to capacity of the ship when we went because it was strictly cruised to the Mediterranean. And although it was out of season, there was still a lot of people on her. And it may just mean that sometimes you may have to move a little bit more forward and a little bit more aft to get the sunbeds that you would like to be in the best position for the sun, etc. 
but as I mentioned in my previous video, it's always good to look at places around the funnels because they have lots of sunbeds lying down the side and also the forward adults only pool has a lot as well and if it is something that you really are worried about and you don't mind spending a little extra then book the retreat because then you can be sure that you have uh, your own sunbeds and some really fancy soft like almost sofa like sunbeds i've never seen such comfy looking sunbeds in my entire life but it really isn't a massive issue or at least i didn't feel like it was so um, hopefully that won't add to your holiday worries when you consider booking Britannia. Number eight, Captain Wesley Dunlop is absolutely amazing. So it may seem a little bit odd that I'm saying that one of my hints and tips is Captain Wesley Dunlop, but he truly is a fantastic captain. And all the captains in Pino are amazing, but he really stood out for me because he had the most unique personality I've ever come across with a captain. He was so light-hearted but informative and he always made everyone chuckle and you could see people smiling a little after his announcements when you're in the public areas. So he clearly had a very special talent in that regard. And Pino clearly noted this because he's going to be the captain for Iona's first maiden season. So for those of you who are booking on to Iona, you're in for a real treat. Number nine spend one night in the crow's nest now the crow's nest is my favorite bar on board britannia and it has panoramic views and is situated right at the front above the bridge now in the daytime it's a fantastic place just to have a sit and a read and it's quite a quiet place and you can have a coffee and watch the world go by but in the evenings it transforms into this very swanky sophisticated cocktail bar and there's always a pianist playing um, before dinner or after dinner and I just love the atmosphere it brings because in my opinion there is truly nothing better than sitting here on a formal night when everyone's dressed up, up looking absolutely gorgeous and there's a pianist playing away and you're sipping your favourite cocktail and I would urge anyone to do this at least once. Number 10. Just enjoy Britannia. It always seems that people like to complain about anything and everything and I know that I did mention at the beginning of this video about some bits of Britannia that I do think need a bit of an alteration or stuff that I do think they should have included but there are reasons behind this that I'm not aware of but in any case do enjoy Britannia. There will always be things on any ship that people don't like and there will always be occasions which may be out of your control. There may be rough weather, you may have to miss a port, you may not be feeling too good whilst you're on it because of whatever stuff is happening in your life. But I would urge you, when you're on Britannia, enjoy it to the full. Do stuff that you wouldn't normally do and explore her because at the end of the day, you're on holiday and you're on holiday to enjoy yourself and cruising is a fantastic experience and it's a real privilege and approach Britannia with an open mind. So that's it. That is my 10 hints and tips about P&O Britannia. Now I really hope that you enjoyed this series on Britannia and I absolutely loved her and I know the beginning of today's video was highlighting some areas that I think people should be aware of but I do think she is a fantastic ship and I will happily go on her in the near future and I hope that I do. But for those of you who are booked on her, I hope you have an amazing time. And for those who have been on her, I hope you loved her as much as I did. So I hope you've enjoyed this and if you like it, then please like and subscribe my channel because I'm intending to do a series of similar ship tours and hints and tips on other P&O ships, including Aurora and Azura, as well as commenting on my other ship visits that I've been on, including the new Staten Dam, Crown Princess, and Silver Cloud. So this is Cruise with Matthew, and I hope you have a very good day. Thank you very much.